the candidate is being asked to turn right at the roundabout and taking the third exit. So they've moved into the right lane in good time, they've checked their mirrors, they signalled right and they're slowing down into the roundabout, checking to the right early to see if it's safe to go. It's looking safe to go, so into gear two and off we go. Third exit. There's the first exit. There's the second exit. They're taking the next exit. Now, did you notice a serious fault there? They cut in front of that silver car when they exit the roundabout. Notice the silver car signalling right. They shouldn't be in that lane to turn right, but we need to notice that and be aware of them. The candidate wasn't. We're taking the next exit off the roundabout, so we should be starting to check our middle and left mirror now to get an early notification of what might be next to us so we have more time to decide what to do. The candidate fails to do this. They haven't checked their mirrors yet. Or yet, now they're checking and now they're signalling. So they checked their mirrors and they signalled after they started to move across very, very late. And this is why it's surprising at the end of the test. The candidate said to me, what silver car? There wasn't a silver car next to me. And when they watched back the footage, they couldn't believe there was a silver car. They just didn't believe it was there because they checked, but they didn't see it. The reason they didn't see it is they checked their mirrors far too late. It also shows the importance of checking both your middle and your left mirror. Just the middle mirror is not good enough. Like you can see on the rear view camera, he can barely see the car in the middle mirror. You need to look in your left mirror to see it properly. It also shows the importance of checking your mirrors at least twice before changing lanes to exit. If you just check just once, chances are you will miss something or misjudge something. If you then do see there is a car very close to you, just continue back round the roundabout and then come back round a second time and if it's safe to, then exit the second time. The candidate is moving quite slowly and the traffic light changes to amber. They've got quite a bit of distance to the stop line given their speed. But when they stop, they stop well over the stop line. I think here they were far too focused on the lorry in front of them and not paying attention to the traffic light and where the stop line was. Although no danger is actually caused, it is illegal to stop over the line. So a serious fault needs to be given. The candidate should have stopped here. If they would have stopped here, they would have got no serious fault. Hi guys, I thought I'd just show you this book to add to your collection. The New Driver's Handbook. It's a free in one book and it's got some pretty good reviews from a driving examiner and a driving instructor. It has over 800 practice theory test questions, common driving test faults, driving test general tips, and advice on dealing with nerves on the big day. Finally, it has tips for after you've passed your test, including vehicle maintenance and driving abroad. You can find a link to this book in the description below. Now, back to the video. Two roundabouts coming up. The first one, we're following the road ahead. Really good speed choice, we can spot our road markings and get in the correct lane, and then checking it safe, and at a good speed to be able to stay in our lane, as it's very sharp this roundabout, lots of steering required. The next roundabout, we're turning right, the third exit for Crawley. So we need to look at the road signs, and that confirms it's the right lane for Crawley. We can see there's a black vehicle in the right lane, and they do appear to slow down. So I'm guessing the candidate did signal right here to see if they can pull over and see if the black car lets them go. And the black car was letting them go, but the candidate didn't move over. If of course the candidate wasn't sure if it is safe to go, they could have braked and let the black car pass and then move to the right lane after. This would not delay traffic behind as there is no traffic behind us in our lane. And also there's a red traffic light ahead. So even if there was traffic behind us, 
we wouldn't be delaying them because they're going to be slowing down anyway for the red light. If the roundabout was more free flowing and there was no traffic lights, then it might be less appropriate to brake and let the black car go, as we might be delaying traffic behind us. In which case, we'd even need to make that judgement to safely pull in front of them, or just not change lanes at all and carry on in the left lane, as the candidate does. Looking at the road signs ahead of us, we can see this left lane just goes for Horsham A264. It doesn't go for Crawley A23. That's only the right lane that does that. So, let's see what the candidate does. So we proceed to the traffic lights, checking to the right to make sure all the traffic has stopped at their red light. Good positioning so far by staying in the lane. And it's marked as Horsham A264. So, still good positioning here. Anticipate those traffic lights. Now, let's just pause it here. Now, at this point, the candidate should be following the road ahead for Horsham A264 as that's the lane they're currently in. So I've shown the exit here, and they should be exiting in the left lane, as that's the lane they're currently in on the roundabout. Instead, the candidate decides to use the Horsham lane to go round to Crawley A23. Now this is quite confusing for other drivers, as you're in a lane that's for Horsham, yet go to Crawley. So it's quite unpredictable, and it's quite high risk of having a collision as other drivers don't expect you to go that way in that lane. If the candidate would have checked their middle and right mirrors effectively and signalled right before proceeding round to the Crawley lane and it is all safe to go, they might have got away with just a driver fault as they're in the wrong lane but at least their motor is safe. But because no mirror checks were done and no signal was done, a serious fault was unfortunately given. Here's a common serious fault on roundabouts. Imagine you're the blue car at the bottom turning left at the roundabout. You're checking right and you can see this white car on the inside lane signalling right. Many novice drivers will assume that white car is continuing around the roundabout, so therefore assume it's safe to pull out and turn left. This, however, is very dangerous and will get a serious fault as that white car could potentially turn off the exit that you're about to turn into and then collide with you. And in this situation, the white car has priority. So if you got into an accident, it would be your fault as the blue car. Here are some examples of drivers rushing their roundabouts and making that misjudgment and that assumption and almost getting into a collision. As I enter the roundabout, notice the black car in front of me on the inside lane. They're signalling right, and the van at the moment is going to assume they're going round. But they're not. They're exiting. So the black car had to brake quite firmly to avoid a collision. Here's another example. The silver van in front of me is turning left, and there's a big white van coming round on the inside lane. The silver van assumes they're continuing round and then the white van turns off and has to brake a fair bit to avoid hitting the silver van. So the silver van should have given way to the white van and not assumed the white van is going round. In both of these examples, both drivers who enter the roundabout would have given a serious fault or more likely the examiner would have stopped the candidate from pulling out as it's far too dangerous to make the assumption.